Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about space travel but specifically about a technique that is still kind of in the planning and still kind of theoretical but would potentially allow us to travel anywhere in the universe in what seems to be under 50 years. Let's talk about this unusual yet very theoretically sound idea and welcome to What The Math. So, what exactly are we talking about? Well, we actually are going to be talking about, uh, about a technique that has been quite prevalent in many science fiction shows, including some of my most favorite TV shows, such as uh, Firefly and uh, The Expanse. And the uh, idea is actually called constant acceleration travel. Now, let me just show you how it works. It's not anything like in Star Trek where you have warping, Neither it is any kind of a unusual um, instant sort of travel where you just kind of teleport to a new location. It's actually something that's very theoretical, very, very realistic, but does require something that we don't yet have. And that something is basically uh, an engine that can travel and burn energy for a very, very long time. Now, let's actually use this um, spaceship right here from Space Engine to try to demonstrate how this works. Basically, normally, when you're flying a rocket, and this is just an example of a NASA rocket, you have a limited amount of fuel coming out of your uh, boosters and your engine, and then once it's done, the rocket sort of goes into um, more of a trajectory flight where um, it can still kind of manipulate its trajectory a little bit, but because there's almost no fuel left, uh, it only has a very limited amount of um, booster power to try to change its trajectory. In other words, most satellites, they actually use Things like, for example, a slingshot maneuver that you see right here uh, that uses the gravity well of other objects, like other planets, to try to accelerate and get a little bit more speed. But in this particular situation, we're actually are going to use our spacecraft's own propulsion to create what's known as constant acceleration. So in other words, uh, let, let's just say for all intents and purposes, we invented a technology that allows us to basically burn our engine constantly without stopping. Now, it's already kind of in the works. As a matter of fact, there are several ideas and uh, theories out there that um, have these types of engines. Like here's, for example, one of many such proposals that uses um, the engine with antimatter technology that would create uh, basically constant uh, 0.1 g acceleration and uh, would burn toward, like, for example, Mars uh, for about half the trip and then turn around and burn away from Mars for the other half just to slow down. This would actually allow us to get to Mars in about 30 days. In other words, what you would do is and let's just demonstrate this by controlling the spacecraft directly, we would basically burn our engines toward um, an object or like a planet or a star far, far away for a very, very long time, for half the trip, essentially. And we would do this non-stop. Now, why would we do this non-stop? Well, because it's actually going to solve a lot of problems. First of all, it's going to allow us to travel really, really fast and get to places really fast. But second of all, it would actually create constant gravity on the inside on the inside of the spacecraft um, which would then allow us and let's actually just decrease the gravity a little bit uh, which would then allow us to basically uh, create artificial um, gravity field inside the spacecraft which would uh, prevent all kinds of problems that are usually associated with spending too much time in um, low gravity environments so basically things like weak bones and so on and so forth would totally be eliminated if we traveled in space with 1g acceleration at all times. Now let's say we have this engine, which we might actually get in the next 50 or so years, um, and we start traveling around our solar system using this engine just like we do in TV shows like um, The Expanse. If you actually go to this online calculator that I'm posting in, in the description below, um, you would discover that you actually can get pretty much anywhere in our solar system really, really quickly. So if you travel for 1G toward an object, or I guess halfway to the object, and then you would basically turn around and burn uh, your engines away from the object for the rest of the time, 
you could pretty much get to even the farthest uh, object in space, like for example Pluto, in only approximately 25 days. So basically, half the distance is about 12.8 days, and the other half is also 12.8, so that's about 25 days to get to Pluto. If you were to travel farther away, like let's just say uh, hypothetical Planet 9, which is at a distance of about maybe 600 to 1000 astronomical units, and let's just make this 500, it would only take you approximately um, 64 days to get there. In other words, within about two months, you would already be in some of the farthest reaches of um, our solar system. To travel to the closest star, such as our neighbor Proxima Centauri, which I believe is somewhere right there at a distance of approximately four light years away from us, which basically means that light would take about four and a half uh, years to travel there. It's kind of hard for me to zoom in from here. Um, but yeah, that star right there uh, would only take us approximately 2,000 days or about uh, basically about five years to get to. So, essentially, in five years, we could already be there. Now, obviously, this is using physics that are uh, realistic. It's traveling under the speed of light. But what's interesting here is that you would actually reach speeds very, very close to the speed of light. As a matter of fact, um, during this trip, you would start experiencing what, what's known as the uh, dilation effect, so also known as the relativistic effect. So here, uh, there's actually a simulation here we can take a look at. If we were to travel from, um, if we were to travel here, notice how at some point our rocket actually starts getting shorter and the time here slows down. So for the traveler on the spacecraft, the time um, doesn't seem to change, but for the observer outside, the rocket gets shorter and at the same time, people on the rocket start moving much slower. As a matter of fact, during this trip, uh, you would have probably only experienced uh, the passage of about 2.75 times 2, which is about 5.5 years, whereas the person on Earth would have actually experienced a slightly longer time. It would actually be approximately uh, 7.6 years. In other words, there's a two-year difference here. The person on the rocket would have um, basically gotten about a year younger. And this is what we call the relativistic effects. Also, the length of the craft at some point would be about 45% of the total length. And the farther you go using this technique, the more relativistic ex uh, effects you start experiencing. So using this technique, so basically using this constant acceleration, we can actually get to the point where um, you kind of reach speeds uh, that are very, 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 very close to the speed of light. And we're going to see if we can maybe just achieve that here as well. I want to see if I can get to really high velocities in Space Engine that are kind of relatively close to the speed of light without using any warping technology. And uh, basically, um, at, at the point where you start getting to like 290,000 uh, kilometers per second, Oh, look at that, we already see some stuff moving here. Um, you actually start uh, experiencing time differently. You start seeing a lot of red shift and blue shift effects. At this point, we actually start seeing planets moving. Um, and essentially, the farther you go, the more you experience it. So let's just say you decide to go to um, TRAPPIST-1, which is about 40 light years away from us, which means that you're going to be blasting your engines for about 20 light years and then turn around and blast for about 20 more light years. This means that you will spend six years uh, traveling halfway, so that's 12 years in total. But the person on Earth will, will have experienced about 43 or almost 44 years of um, life. So it would actually look a little bit different. First of all, your ship would get a lot shorter, 8% of the length. You would be cl uh, traveling at a much, much closer to speed of light uh, velocity. And uh, you would actually experience a lot of time dilation. Now, you might already imagine where I'm going with this, and this is actually why the title of this video is that you can pretty much get anywhere in the universe within your lifetime. There's actually a graph that I was going to show you as well, and and this is directly from Wikipedia. This is a graph for 1G accelerated twin round trip. Basically, no matter where you go in the universe, if you're traveling at 1G constant acceleration, you can pretty much travel anywhere in the universe, including the edge of the visible universe, and still get there 
uh, and also return from there in under 100 years. So we're not quite there yet. We're still only at about one tenth of the speed of light, but I'm going to wait until the ship gets to this velocity. But basically, let's say we're traveling to the middle of our galaxy to the Sagittarius A star black hole, which is about 27 light years, um, 27,000 light years away from us, which is about approximately, just say 14,000, just so I don't have to type 500. 14,000 light years away from us there, and then turn around and 14,000 more. This would take us a total of 18 and a half years. For the person on Earth, they will probably not live through this, as it takes basically just over 14,000 years. But the person on the spacecraft will totally survive. See, that spacecraft actually doesn't even show anymore because it's so thin. Uh, it's basically just a line that is barely even visible. Uh, but this person that was traveling on the spacecraft will have spent approximately 37 years on the spacecraft and will have reached the middle of the galaxy. And so here uh, in Space Engine, our spaceship is currently traveling at 0.99 the speed of light. It's essentially very, very, very close to the speed of light, and it's uh, the gravitational um, force on, on the spacecraft right now, basically the gravity that's being created by the engine is a little bit lower than the gravity on Earth, so we're going to change it to 1G, almost 1G. So this is essentially how this would look. You're traveling at an extremely, extremely fast velocity, but for you on a spacecraft right now, nothing is really changing. Nothing looks different. You do see uh, things differently though. So things coming toward you are going to be extremely blue shifted. Everything here is going to look more or less normal, but everything behind you is going to be extremely red shifted. So all of this will be black. And also most of this will be black as well, but also with a lot of really high, um, highly radioactive energy coming toward you because you're traveling toward those um, waves. And I've actually tried to simulate this in one of the previous videos uh, where we used another simulation code uh, um, at the speed of light. Now, so what we're going to do now is let's just take a look at how long it would actually take for us to travel, not to the middle of our galaxy. And actually, actually let's accelerate time a little bit here just so we can start traveling at slightly faster speed. But you can see that even at 10,000 uh, time acceleration, you're still not really moving that much. It doesn't seem like you're moving, even though you're traveling ridiculously fast. That's how slow the speed of light really is in reality. So anyway, let's go here and let's enter the uh, approximate distance uh, or half distance to the edge of the universe. And now we're gonna click on calculate and see the total number of years. It's actually 44 years. In total, uh, you it would take you about 88 years to travel from essentially Earth, which already <laughs> gives me a lot of errors in calculation here, uh, to the edge of the universe, um, basically turning around and starting to slow down halfway. Now it says fuel mass is infinity because this would require a tremendous amount of fuel or a technology that we just don't have yet. But in terms of time, it would only take 88 years. In other words, if you leave now, then your grandkids will get there. So this suggests to us that this technology is definitely where we had it in terms of space travel. This is exactly the type of engines that we're probably going to be creating in the future. And these are the types of engines that will allow us to travel to really, really, really far distances um, in essentially our lifetime. Now, we don't really have the um, means for basically what would be unlimited acceleration just yet, but the theories are there. We just have to put them into practice and start creating engines that will take us at least to the edge of our own solar system for now. And anyway, so that's kind of all I wanted to really talk about in this video. I wanted to give you an idea of um, the technology used in several TV shows that's actually very, very brilliant and has been around, um, in, at least on paper, since early 60s. Uh, it was proposed originally back in the 60s, but we still haven't really found a way to do it. One day we'll definitely have this, and one day this will be actually the kind of a solution to many problems that humanity is facing with space travel right now. But for now, we can only dream and try to develop something that will allow us to travel really, really, really fast uh, with constant acceleration that will actually let us create artificial gravity on the spacecraft without using any kind of uh, unusual technology that may not exist in real life. Well, anyway... 
that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And let's actually just let go of the spacecraft. Letting it fly into the abyss of space at essentially almost the speed of light. Because nothing really travels at the speed of light. But the closer you get to the speed of light, the more likely you're actually going to experience more and more time dilation. Which also means that time kind of slows down for you more and more. So even though you never reach the speed of light, this is why you're able to travel at such far away distances in such a short time, at least for you, inside the spacecraft. Anyway, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye bye.